Welcome to the second part of Sono Anatomy of the Peripheral Nerve System. In the next hour, I want to show you some nerves of the groin and the lower extremity. We won't manage to do all of them, of course. Uh, the time is too short for that, uh, but just a few ones. So, this is our beautiful world, and when we want to see Innsbruck, my hometown, it's really tiny here, and you won't find it for the first uh, view. But perhaps you know the region. You know you have to search anywhere in Europe. Perhaps you have heard from Austria. And then we have some landmarks. Our capital, uh, capital Vienna, and famous towns in our neighborhood, Munich, Zurich, or also Zagreb, the capital town of Croatia in our neighborhood. And so we have some landmarks, and when we know landmarks, they are surrounding our point. We can see this small point, this small red dot in Spruck, easier than before. So this is the same in nerve sonography, in the peripheral nerve sonography. When we want to see tiny nerves in our body, we have to know where we have to look, and we have to know the landmarks, um, which help us to find the nerve we, will, uh, we want to see. So this is the menu for the next hour. I will show you as an amus, oops, sorry, amus girl, the border nerves, the iliohypogastric and ilioinguinal nerves, then some nerves as starters you probably know already, the femoral ischiatic nerve, and then tibialis encephinus nerve. As main dishes, uh, something which we all uh, often have in our uh, daily routine. Oh, oops, sorry. The lateral cutaneous femoral nerve, which is often uh, asked to, uh, to get infiltrated in Meralgia Paristhetica. The sural nerve uh, pre, uh, after surgery, and the lateral and medial plantar nerves, they are not that often asked. And uh, for the end, some recommended specials, the pudendal and obturator nerve. So, this is the lumbar plexus, and this is a huge web of nerves uh, emerge, uh, that emerge that plexus. And the most of the ventral nerves of the lower limb come out of it. So the first two ones, the iliohypogastric and ilioinguinal inguinal nerve, um, they, uh, they emerge the plexus dorsal of the psoas uh, muscle and then run on the, uh, on the surf surface of the quadratus lumborum muscle ventrally and in a uh, slight obliquely uh, uh, course. And then they pierce, that's important, they pierce the transverse abdominis muscle and run in the abdominal wall ventrally, and that's the point where we can find them. So, external landmarks. They are important to know where to put the probe for the first uh, contact. We uh, can see by, uh, in the most patients, in some of them we have to palpate, the anterior suprailiac spine. It's easy to find, and then we go two to three cross fingers proximal and dorsal to the, um, to the spine. Put the probe in a perpendicular approach on the iliac crest. You see the uh, lateral edge of the probe should lie on the crest. And then we get this uh, picture. And now we can define our internal landmarks. This is the high echo from the iliac crest and the three layers of the abdominal wall. And they are important. The deepest one is the transverse abdominal muscle. Then we have the internal obli oblique uh, and the external oblique muscle. And the space between the transverse and the internal oblique, this is the important space where we have to uh, search the nerves. And then you see here those tiny nerves in a cross-section area, the ilioinguinal nearby the uh, iliac crest, and in the direct neighborhood, the iliohypogastric hypogastric nerve, we could also see in this layer the sub um, subcostal nerve. So, uh, the iliohypogastric nerve has two end branches, and we could also um, search them. After they are sometimes asked after surgery when, they, uh, when patients feel pain in the lateral area um, of the flank, and 
once again, the external landmark is the, spin, uh, the, the spine. It's easy to find. Now we have to go dorsally a little bit more, just two to three uh, cross fingers, a little bit cranial to it. Put the probe once again in the transversal approach, the lateral edge on the iliac crest. And then we have this picture. Oops, sorry. The high echo of the bone. Then the two layers here are only two layers because we are very laterally. The internal and external oblique um, muscle. Over it, there's just subcutis. And the point of optimal visibility where we can find this lateral cutaneous branch is where it pierces the external lamina of the uh, external oblique muscle. And we can see here this cross-section area of the nerve. When it, ru it runs uh, forward uh, in a subcutane uh, uh, course, but here's usually very hard to see. The other end branch of the iliohypogastric uh, nerve is the median cutanean nerve. And the external landmark here is not that easy to find. It's the superficial inguinal ring, uh, which you can palpate. In men, it's uh, helpful to ask the patient to cough, then you can feel it better. And then you put a probe on the skin a little bit proximal and lateral to the inguinal ring in a slight, um, a slight ob oblique position, as you can see it here. And then you get this picture. And of course, we're in the same region. Uh, once again, the internal oblique abdominal muscle is one of the important uh, internal landmarks. The other one is the rectus abdominis muscle. It's always easy to find. Uh, it runs uh, straight downwards. So this is uh, the region where we have to search. And important is this region between those muscles. Uh, the best point to see the nerve is in the fascia of the internal, ob uh, internal oblique abdominal muscle, as you can see it here. Here's the fascia, here's the border of the muscle, and this is the cross-section area of this sensory nerve. So, let's uh, go over to the starters. Something uh, uh, we have heard often of is the femoral nerve, a big nerve, and he exits the pelvis um, in the, uh, it runs under the inguinal ligament here, in the lacuna musculorum. The, the, this room under the lig inguinal ligament is divided by this iliopectineal uh, arch in the lacuna musculorum and the lacuna vasorum. In this uh, lacuna musculorum, there's the femoral nerve, the lateral cutaneous um, femoral nerve, and the iliopsoas muscle. And when we see this, it's easy to define our external landmark. It's the femoral artery. We all know where it is. Usually, you don't have to palpate it in slim patients. You just take the probe and put it in the region where we, as, as doctors, should know that the artery is. If the patient, um, it, if, if it's not that easy, just try to palpate and you feel the, the pulsation of the artery. Like this, and then you put the probe a little bit lateral to the artery on the skin in a transversal approach. And then we see this typical picture. I think we all have se uh, seen it yet. The femoral artery, here's a little bit of pressure uh, with, the, with the probe, so the vein is compressed. And this hyperechogenic band over the vessels, this is the inguinal ligament. We have here the psoas muscle, so this is the lacuna musculorum, and usually the nerve is lying direct in the neighborhood of the vessels. You can see here this honeycombing pattern of a typical cross-section area of a nerve. And this is a special patient. This, uh, this nerve is separated by a small artery in a smaller superficial part and a deeper, bigger part. Um, as a variation, it does not have to lie in direct contact to the artery. You could al also find it a few centimeters um, lateral to it. Um, it's, uh, what I have to say, you just have to search directly under the inguinal ligament because the nerve is dividing very quickly in, in its end branches and you won't see this main stem uh, for a long distance. So the next one, 
the ischiatic, uh, is, uh, the sciatic nerve, nervus ischiaticus, the biggest nerve in our body. It's really easy to find. I will show you two, um, two heights where we can see it to the anatomy. It gets its, uh, its fibers from L3, uh, L4 to S3, and then exits the pelvis through the foramen ischiaticum, through the in, uh, infrapiriform part of this foramen. It runs under the piriform muscle, usually. And then over the gemelli and the obturato internus, and what, uh, what's important or, or an important muscle for sonography is the quadratus femoris muscle. Uh, it continues through the dorsal, uh, um, uh, dorsal um, part of the flexor muscles under the hamstrings, uh, uh, straight downwards to the popliteal fossa. So, the external landmarks. They are also to find very easily in most patients. The greater trochanter and the ischial tuberosity. And we have this line between those external landmarks. We put on the probe here. You can see here we use for this usually an, uh, a curved probe. We need the penetration of the lower frequencies because it's deep. And then uh, and the, the medial end of the probe should lie on the, tuber uh, on the tuberosity. And then you get this picture. The big muscle in the superficial aspect of this uh, Im image is the, uh, the gluteus maximus muscle, a huge muscle, and as a bony structure, our internal landmark, the ischial tuberosity. And then this is what I told you, the quadratus femoris muscle. It has usually a lower echogenicity than the, than the other muscles, muscles surrounding it. And here's the point of optimal visibility for the gluteal uh, or subgluteal region of the ischial nerve, and it is this huge hyperechogenic cross-section area. Uh, it's easy to find in the most patients and very, uh, a very quick approach. So I told you, usually it exits the, uh, the, the foramen uh, ischiaticum under the piriformis muscle, but there are, uh, there are some variations. Uh, it, called, it could be two parts of this uh, sciatic nerve in this region, and it is divided then in... in. Uh, it could just pierce the muscle with one part, with the higher one. It could separ be separated by the piriformis muscle, or it could pierce the muscle at the, uh, as a main stem. This is important to know in, uh, in patients with piriformis muscle syndrome, when you want to do an inf infiltration, you want to Botox the, uh, the, the piriformis muscle and you should know the anatomy because when you're going with a needle in this direction and you're going through the nerve, it would be a problem. So the next uh, step downwards is, the, uh, is on the distal um, thigh. Our external landmark is now the gluteal fold. It's also to see very easily two cross fingers distal of the gluteal fold and then put just the probe in a, a transversal approach in the middle of the thigh. You can here use a linear probe if it's possible, uh, otherwise you have to uh, change to the, um, to the curved one. You get this picture, the hamstrings you probably know. So, Internal landmarks, the most important one is the long head of the biceps uh, femoris muscle and in the deep, the adductor magnus. And in between those muscles, we see once again this huge nerve. Um, it's easy to find and you can follow it the whole thigh downwards to the, to, to the popliteal fossa, to the bifurcation in the two end, uh, in its two branches. And as a variation, we could see the whole uh, length of the, of the thigh, two nerves lying beneath each other when there's a high bifurcation of this uh, sciatic nerve. So, one branch of the sciatic nerve, the tibial nerve. Um, I think anatomy is clear. It runs straight uh, downwards through the uh, popliteal fossa in the center of this fossa and then um, 
goes in the deep under the tendinous arch of the soleus muscle and runs in the uh, flexor um, compartment to the medial ankle, just straight downwards through in between uh, of the muscles. And we uh, search it in the distal third of the lower um, extremity of the lower leg, and we can palpate when we don't know where to put the, the, the probe, the distal end of the soleus muscle and the flexor muscles, and then once again, transversal approach, and we get this picture. Here we can see the bony structure of the tibia, the flexor muscles, the end of the soleus muscle, and the most important internal landmarks for the tibial uh, nerve are the posterior uh, tibial uh, vessels. Here you can see usually very easy the posterior tibial artery. When you do your ultrasound without any pressure, you can also see the accompanying veins. When you use pressure, they are vanished. And then in the, in the direct neighborhood, you can see the tibial, uh, tibial nerve very quickly, very easy and then follow, him, him, uh, follow it upwards or downwards uh, to find the pathology. pathology. So uh, we go a little bit more distally to the ankle, and here uh, we can see the tibial nerve coming downwards. Then a branch exits the nerve before it enters the tarsal tunnel. In the tarsal tunnel, there's the bifurcation in the two end branches I will show you later. But now we will have a look at this small, uh, end, or small uh, sensory nerve, uh, which exits the nerve. Um, it's the same region as we had before, transversal approach, and we follow just the nerve downwards, looking on this nerve. Here, we, we are going uh, we are more distal, and now we see a hyperechogenic band. This is the flexor retinaculum. And the tibial nerve, what we saw before, here the artery, and here the abduct abductor uh, halocis muscle. And then you can see beneath uh, the main stem of the tibial nerve, those, there are a few small uh, nerves. They are running subfascial in contrast to the, um, to the lateral calcania branches. They are subfascial, they are not in the subcutis. And these are the, uh, the medial calcaneal branches. Another sensory nerve, the saphenous nerve, um, it's bigger than you would expect it. And just once again to the anatomy, it comes uh, with the femoral nerve through the lacuna musculorum and then exits it, runs together with the femoral vessels. Um, to the medial aspect of the thigh, enters the adductor channel and pierces it at the distal, in the distal third of the uh, thigh, and comes then to the superficial um, structures and on the distal uh, and, and, and the lower leg, it runs together with the bigger uh, saphane vein to the medial ankle. The important structure, uh, structure I want to show you is this muscle, the sartorius uh, muscle, uh, here covering the femoral vessels and the nerve, and we will see now in the pictures that this, this, is, this is our internal landmark. External landmarks, they are not that easy to define here because there are no bony structures. Uh, it's just the anterior superior iliac spine and the base of the patella, and we know the course so, uh, so uh, where the where the saphene nerve might run. We put the probe in the middle third of the thigh, in the medial aspect, in a transversal approach, and then we get this picture. And here we see the vessels, they're usually too, uh, very easy to see, covered by the sartorius muscle. This muscle usually has a, a nearly triangular structure here. Um, you can find it very easy. Median to it, uh, it's the median vastus muscle, and here uh, in the deep you see, can see the long adductor muscle. So these are our internal landmarks, and then it's not that hard to identify this cross section area of the saphene nerve. And then you can follow it from this position upwards, downwards, and um, yeah, that's not, not very 
uh, hard. As a variation, it does not have to lie anterior lateral to the, to the vessels. It might also lie on the other side of them. So one uh, step more distally. The first uh, picture I showed you was in this region. We go more distally. And once again, we have the sartorius muscle as our um, internal landmark. And now we are at the height of the adductor channel. It is bordered by the median uh, vastus muscle. The sartorius muscle, here is the vastu adductor membrane. It's an important structure, this hyperechogenic band, and the uh, adductor magnus muscle. So this is the adductor channel. And here we see, once again, the transection, uh, the, uh, the, the cross-sectional area of the saphene nerve. And now going to the distal third, where it exits the adductor channel, we just take as uh, our external landmark the base of the patella, one hand proximal to the patella and median um, to the thigh. Oops. In this approach. And it's nearly the same, but now we can see the vasto adductor membrane in the deep. Sartorius muscle lying on it. Here's the median um, vastus muscle. And then we can see here the nerve now lying just beyond the vasto adductor membrane. It just has pierced uh, the membrane and left the adductor channel. It uh, runs, if you want, uh, as internal landmark, you could also take the Doppler and uh, see if there's anywhere uh, an arteri uh, arterial signal. It would be the arteria um, descending, uh, the descending genicular artery. Uh, it could be one external landmark, uh, internal landmark to find the nerve um, because they pierce together the vasto adductor membrane. So, main dishes, the lateral femoral cutan uh, cutaneous nerve. Um, as I told you, we often have to, uh, to assess uh, it in cases of meralgia paresthetica after hip surgery or without any reasons. And it's at the beginning, we, we started to, to search it at the iliac spine, at the anterior suprailiac spine. I will show you a, a point where you can find it more easy, uh, easily and then follow it upwards. So once again, to the anatomy. As I told you, it leaves together with the, uh, uh, with the femoral nerve and the iliopsoas muscle through the lacuna uh, musculorum, the pelvis, and then pierces the um, fascia lata and runs subcutaneous on the lateral and proximal aspect of the thigh. It's a purely sensor, uh, a sensitive nerve. And um, in the pelvis, we could also try to see it, but it's uh, not easy and uh, it's not asked uh, very often. So external landmarks, anterior suprailiac spine, it's very prominent here in this region. Um, you go distally, a few centimeters, and then you ask the patient to lift the limb a little bit. And then you see a little groove between the sartorius muscle and the tensor fasciate muscle. You can also palpate this groove. You fall with your fingers uh, in it. And then you put here the probe in a lateral, uh, in a transversal approach, just a little bit downwards of the spine. Usually you would search meralgia in this uh, region, but you search the nerve first here. And then you get this picture. Sartorius muscle is our internal landmark. The other one, the tensor fasciate, a flat muscle. This is rectus femoris. And now you can see this fat-filled flat channel, a structure uh, where often the, the sub, uh, subcutaneous nerve, they often, often run in such fat-filled uh, flat channels. And this is a very prominent one. And you just follow those muscles upwards and downwards, and then you will identify this channel. And in the center of these channels, we can find these cutaneous nerves, in this case, the cutaneous uh, femoris lateralis. When you found it there, you can follow it upwards, and then you can see uh, if it thickened uh, at the, at the um, iliac spine. What's important to know, especially when you do infiltration therapy, um, there's a high variation in the exit of the pelvis. Usually, it leaves the pelvis median to the anterior suprailiac spine, but it also could go, um, uh, could emerge it 
dorsal to the spine and proximal through the inguinal ligament, even through bony structures they are described, but also a few centimeters medial to the iliac spine. So it's important to know where it is when I want to do an infiltration therapy. And this is um, a study they did, oops, they did, um, they did a cadaver study. And on the one side, uh, a blind approach, just by palpating the anterior superiliac spine, on the other side with ultrasound. And then um, they controlled it. And with a blind, a blind approach, they had just one of 19 needles had a contact to the, uh, to the uh, lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. On the other side, 17 of 19 needles ultrasound with ultrasound were in the right position. So I don't know who did it. We had, would have 19 of 19, of course. But you see this, this big difference. Uh, ultrasound helps us to do, a right, uh, to do the infiltrations on the right position. Of course, you could use a, a high amount of, uh, of drugs, and then you will cover the, the whole region there. But when you do just uh, when you won't have a lot of side effects, take less amount of drugs and the ultrasound, so we'll, you will uh, be precise and very quick. The next one, sural nerve, also a sensory uh, nerve on the distal leg. It uh, is composed of two branches, uh, the cutaneous um, the medial cutaneous nerve and the lateral one, one out of the uh, fibula nerve. They come together anywhere in the middle or distal third of the lower leg. And the nerve runs in between the two heads of the gastrocnemius muscle to the lateral ankle. So we usually try to find it very distally where, it's, uh, where the union has already uh, being of these two nerves, then we can follow it uh, upwards. Uh, external landmarks are the lateral ankle. We go a little bit upwards for cross fingers. Um, we can feel the, um, the Achilles tendon. And there's a groove between those two structures. And we put the probe in a transversal approach again. And we get this picture. Here, the fibular muscles, soleus muscle, distal end, the other side, and we have seen uh, on the medial side. And the important uh, region now is the subcutis. And here, we see this small dark spot, the small saphenous vein. And this is our internal landmark. So you, you, you have to uh, be very carefully, no pressure at all, because when you press the, uh, the probe a little bit on the skin, the, you won't see the vein anymore. And this is our internal landmark. When you find the, the small uh, saphenous uh, vein, you will find the um, sural uh, nerve. Here's the fascia of the muscles and subcutis, and in the neighborhood, anywhere, it could be medial or lateral to the vein, there's the sural nerve. When you found it there, just go upwards, then you will see the one branch in the, in the direction to the tibial nerve, the other one to the fibular nerve, and you can follow them very easy. So the distal branches of uh, the sural nerve, they're running to the lateral uh, ankle, as I've told you before. This uh, web around the lateral ankle, the lateral calcaneal branches, we also can find them. So our external landmarks are, of course, the calcaneus and the insertion of the Achilles tendon, the lateral ankle. And here's the problem, of course, the contact. You could use a lot of gel or you use a, a gel pad because uh, otherwise you might have air between skin and, and, the, um, and the probe and a big problem. Uh, we also have now the hockey stick probe. It's easier with it. It has this small, uh, small um, uh, contact, uh, and you, it's very, very beautiful to do the, the ultrasound this, in this region with the hockey stick probe. You just move downwards your probe along uh, the Achilles tendon in this groove, and anywhere here, the branches should leave the main stem. So this is uh, the fascia, the muscular fascia, 
And in contrast to the uh, medial ones, they are now lying really in the subcutis. So we just have to, uh, to search some tiny little cross-section nerve areas. There are also a few of them, um, not only one nerve, and easy to find. Just follow them upwards and downwards. And then we go to the sole of the foot, to the medial and lateral plantar nerve, the end nerves of the uh, tibial nerve. I've told you uh, the, the tibialis nerve uh, divides in the, in the tarsal tunnel in its two branches, uh, the, lateral, uh, um, the lateral plantar and medial plantar nerve. They are dividing in its end branches uh, more distally. And our problem and our external landmark, both, is the plantar aponeurosis. Uh, external landmark because it's easy to palpate, a problem because it's very dense and it uh, causes a blurring when we do ultrasound there. So it's not very, very uh, good to, to see the nerves uh, in the deep of the sole of the foot. So I will show you just the pictures um, proximally. External landmarks, once again, the medial ankle and the tuba calcani. And we have this line between those external landmarks. We put the probe here, use a gel pad or the a small probe, and then we get this picture. Here are the flexor tendons. And now the important structures, as the same as the tibial nerve uh, proximally, are the the vessels, the posterior tibial vessels, the artery, the accompanying veins, and here this hyperechogenic structure, the flexor retinaculum, and there we see two cross-section areas of the nerve. It's split it yet, the medial and the lateral nerve just after the division. As a variation, you could see the, the main stem uh, going more distally, so a, a deep division in those two nerves, and you could see uh, in the tarsal tunnel just one nerve. A little bit more distally, uh, the same landmarks, and now the probe in a longitudinal um, approach. And here you have to press the, the distal edge in the tissue to get a better image, uh, because it's, it's a dense, uh, dense structures there. The, the sole of the skin has a thick cutis, and it's the plantar fascia uh, also in this region. And then we get this picture, a lot of, uh, this image, a lot of muscles, and just, you have just get orientation, bony structure. So this is the talus, the sustentaculum, tali, the uh, long flexor tendons, um, the short ones, the abductor halocyst tendon, and in the deep, this is the quadrato, uh, plantaris, plantaris quadratus muscle. So. And uh, the most important uh, internal landmark to my mind is the plantar artery, which we see in the center of this uh, connective tissue uh, space here. And it's surrounded by two nerves, so it's in the middle of two nerves, two cross-section areas. These are the medial and the lateral plantar nerve. You can try to follow them more distally, but um, it's the, the problem is the blurring of the plantar aponeurosis. But in the, pic in the book, we also have pictures there. But it's um, yeah, you, we will take time uh, to see them. So we're coming to the end. Recommended specials: the pudendal nerve, a nerve uh, I always got scared when I heard I have to, uh, to assess the pudendal nerve, but uh, now I think it's really easy if you remember just one structure. Anatomy once again, so we have had the sciatic nerve yet, and now the, the, the cutted uh, maximus, uh, gluteus maximus, and we see a structure here where the pudendal nerve runs um, under it, the sacrotuberous ligament. And the most important structure you have to remember is the internal um, obturator internus muscle. External landmarks are once again the ischial tuberosity. Uh, you palpate it and, uh, and you, you put the probe just one to two centimeters proximal to it on the skin. 
once again a curved probe for the for the penetration and you get this picture so this is the lateral and medial side you have here the high echo uh, reflex of the ischial bone and then a structure would reminds us uh, to a waterfall it's just when you're going upwards and downwards you see this structure uh, winding around the ischial bone like a waterfall and then this is our our internal uh, internal landmark you can use the doppler or you see an artery uh, in this region and proximal uh, uh, um, superficial from the dorsal aspect superficial to this artery is the pudendal nerve very easy to find and very easy to infiltrate here uh, I didn't um, believe Hannes until he showed it me, uh, so it's really, a really good thing. The last nerve for today, the obturator nerve. Um, oops, it was too much. So it, uh, it receives its fibers from L2 to L4 and runs behind the psoas muscle downwards to the lesser pelvis and then runs through the obturator channel and divides in two branches, the anterior and posterior one. Our internal landmarks are the uh, adductor muscles, as I will show you now. The external one is once again femoral artery, but now in contrast to the femoral nerve, medial to the artery, we can also palpate the long tendon of the long adductor muscle. And then we put the probe in between those external landmarks in a transversal approach, slight oblique, you will see it, how you can see the muscles then uh, in the best view. And then we get this picture with the bony structures of the ischial bone, super, uh, the su superior and inferior, uh, inferior uh, branch. And in the superficial aspect oops, of the picture, the pectineus muscle, and in the deep, the external uh, obturator muscle. And the point of optimal visibility is here in between those two muscles, pectineus, obturator externus, and this is the cross-section area of the main stem, proximal, just where it exits the, the obturator channel. Um, you could also see uh, two nerves here in, a, in, the, in case of a high bifurcation. When we go more distally, we can now detect the end branches, the uh, anterior and posterior branch, it's the same the same landmarks, but it's just a few centimeters uh, distally to it. And we get this picture of the adductor muscles. In the superficial, uh, um, the superficial one is the long adductor muscle followed by the short one and in the deep, the uh, adductor magnus. Don't uh, think that these, this is, uh, these are two muscles. The adductor brevis usually has this septum in the middle of it, but it's one muscle. So don't uh, think it's just this one. Longus, brevis, magnus. This is what we have to uh, have in mind. Here we see the femoral veins and the, the regions where we have to search for those muscles are anterior uh, nerves, anterior and posterior to the adductor brevis um, muscle. The anterior branch of the obturator nerve runs ventral or anterior to this muscle, the posterior dorsal to it. In this case, we had already a bifurcation of the anterior branch in a small uh, side branch and a bigger one which is running downwards. So, I hope I could show you some external landmarks, internal lam landmarks to find the nerves quick and easy. And now we go over to a live demo. We can do the questions later. Yeah. I saw some more, okay? Uh, no, I think there's no in immediate questions, no. Okay. Also, jetzt hänge ich natürlich da. Kannst du mir mal da helfen? Death by cables. So. Um, ja, so ein bisschen ausstrecken. So, ich kann das aus ausstrecken ein bisschen so, genau. So we will see the big nerves first, femoral, uh, femoral nerve. So what's our external landmark? I think we've heard it a lot of times now. What would you search? 
femoral artery, you could try to palpate it, but usually it's easy to see in an ultrasound picture. The vein is vanishing when I press a little bit. And here we go upwards, inguinal ligament, the femoral artery, the pulsation, and then we were searching for a usually triangular structure. You can see here the femoral nerve lying beneath the vessels. When we go downwards, it vanishes because there are a lot of small branches uh, coming out of this huge nerve. The lateral cutaneous femoris, uh, femoral nerve, we would just ask the patient to lift the limb a little bit. Got a bit on him, spine. And then we see and feel this groove here. Can you see it? No. Hmm. It's getting tired now, no? <laughs> Gets a bit. <laughs> here is this groove. Uh, I can feel it. <laughs> then wieder hinlegen. And then you put the probe here in a transversal approach. We see here the sartorius muscle. And you were here the tensor fasciate, and here's this fat filled flat channel. And in the center of the channel, we see here uh, already a division. Here's a small side branch, and here's the main stem of the lateral cutaneous femoris nerve. I'm now going upwards a, a little bit, and you see the internal landmark, the sartorius muscle, and it's running on the in a fl here is flattened and on the uh, on the muscle upwards to the ah, now I've lost it once again back there here you can see the nerve it's very flat here there are a lot of fascicles running beneath each other and upwards to the here's the spine and the exit of the nerve is here. So it's easier to find it in this position than at the iliac spine, anterior superior iliac spine. So now we are searching for the uh, saphenous nerve. You just have to ask the patient to, uh, 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 to line an external rotation just a little bit. Then in the middle third of the, uh, of the thigh, we put the probe on the skin. And then we can see so, the triangular structure of the sartorius muscle. And here in the deep, or deep to it, the uh, femoral artery and the vein. And lying beneath the artery here, the saphenous nerve. So we can follow it upwards or downwards. Now we are going to the distal third. And here we saw the arteria... Um, uh, genodestinence, leaving, piercing the uh, vasoadductor membrane, yep, in this position, and here also the nerves pierces the membrane, as you have saw, uh, seen it yet. And here is a small branch uh, which we could follow to the knee, it's the infrapatellar branch of the nerve. Once again, here the vessels, sa uh, sartorius muscle, and then it's not very hard to find the saphenous nerve and follow it downwards. Here's the nerve after the penetration of the uh, vastoadductor membrane. Good. Then, what machen wir denn? The border nerves. So, external landmark for the border nerves is the in this region, it's always one external landmark, the anterior suprailiac spine, which, which we can palpate or, of course, see in slim uh, patients. We go a little bit proximal and dorsal of the, um, of the spine, and then we put the probe in a perpendicular approach to the iliac crest, and then we can see those three layers of the abdominal wall, the transverse abdominal muscle, the inter intern and extern oblique muscle, and then here's the iliac crest, and beneath the crest there are two cross-section areas. Here's one, and here's the other one, the ilioinguinal and iliohypogastric nerve. You can, could try to follow them uh, distally. Um, they are sometimes injured uh, in uh, post-operative uh, 
problems, but uh, to find them, you just have to look here on the uh, proximal to the iliac spine, where these uh, three layers are really easy to see. Eins, zwei, uh, one, two, three. <laughs> so then um, we go, we turn around, please. So, then we change to the abdominal probe or curved probe. So, external landmarks, the uh, ischial tuberosity, just try to palpate it, or you can see here the bony structure. The big muscle in the superficial aspect of the image is the uh, gluteus maximus muscle in the deep, the quadratus lumborum, and here in between the uh, sciatic nerve easy to find here. And in this region, we also can have a look at the pudendal uh, nerve. And this is the, the structure I've told you, this waterfall sign. Here, around the uh, ischial tuberosity, just a little bit proximal to it, and you see this dark uh, muscle, the intern um, ob obturatorius internal muscle, and then we can try to get the pudendal artery. Yeah? Um, um. No, what is loose? Hmm? Just a moment. We don't see the pudendal artery. Ah. No. Yeah. It m has to be in this region. And here's the nerve, the pudendal nerve, just um, beyond the artery. Now we had the signal. Uh, here you can see the cross section area of the nerve. It's always next to the uh, obturator internus muscle and easy to find. And when you do an infiltration, you have uh, uh, the, uh, an, uh, an approach from the lateral side in this direction, and it's very easy, very quick. Here's the nerve. So the sciatic nerve on the, on the thigh, very easy to find. Just put the probe in the middle of the thigh, uh, a few centimeters uh, distal to the gluteal fold. And then we have the long head of the biceps muscle, uh, here, other side, no. This, this is the adductor magnus mus muscle, semitendinosus and semi semimembranosus, and here the long head of the biceps muscle, and in between this huge nerve, you can also have a longitudinal view of it, the sciatic nerve, and we uh, can follow it downwards, just in the center of the thigh, when we have enough gel. straight downwards, and anyway, here we should see the bifurcation in the two branches. That's, um, I will want to change to the 14 megahertz probe. It's easier to see with a higher frequency. So here, this huge nerve, long head of biceps muscle, adductor magnus, and here the nerve. We're coming in the near of the popliteal fossa. And this is already the, ah, here's the bifurcation. Do you see it? Here's one prominent fascicle in the fibula uh, um, branch. And here we have, it's, uh, it's hard to see because there's, um, uh, uh, curvy uh, course of the nerve, but here we can see very good this bifurcation in the 
fibular and tibial nerve. The fibular nerve goes to the lateral um, uh, uh, to the lateral side of the knee, and the tibial nerve runs straight downwards with the vessels through the popliteal fossa. Here's the nerve, and then. With the, uh, under the tendinous arch of the soleus muscle, which is here, this one. So just the center of the, of the distal thigh. Here's the tibial nerve. It's, go, it's descending here in this region from the, uh, from the center uh, under the tendinous arch, and here it's Really, um, it's it's not that uh, that sharp. Then we can the, uh, then we can see it in the distal thigh, but here it's the artery, the pulsate, uh, uh, pulsation of the artery, and here the tibial nerve lying beneath it. And he, this is the arch, and here it goes under this arch. Um, distally, jetzt müsst mal wieder umdrehen, bitte. So. Got to a bit nach außen drin. So, a slight external rotation. We have the um, inner ankle, the Achilles tendon, and here this groove be between those structures. We put the probe in a transversal approach. And then I can get a bit closer. And here we have the tibia, the um, the muscles, the flexor muscles, soleus muscle, and in between the pulsation of the uh, distal uh, dorsal tibial artery. And here, next to the artery. we can see this beautiful cross-section area of the tibial nerve. You see the veins, they are vanishing under pressure, artery and the nerve. We can follow the nerve now in the tarsal tunnel. Here's the flexor retinaculum, always in the neighborhood of the posterior tibial artery. And here we have already the bifurcation of the tibial nerve in the median and the lateral uh, plantar branch. When we want to see the lateral, uh, the medial calcania branches, we just see, f uh, have to scan the nerve and see when small branches leave it. It's here, one branch. And there are subfascial. Here's another one. You see this small bubbles running under the, uh, under the retinaculum, um, flexor retinaculum. So just turn inside a little bit, and we will search the suralis nerve. Vielleicht einfach ein bisschen ganz auf die Seite drehen. So, ja, so ist super. So proximal of the lateral ankle. Anywhere there has to be the small saphenous vein, but it isn't here. Ah, da. Jetzt muss man nochmal bitte auf den Bauch drehen. It's easier to turn the patient on the stomach. Tut mir leid, bist du nach voll gell? In the distal third and here we see an uh, interesting vein. Just the vein. This one. It seems. Uh, yeah, this, this must be the vein. Ich verstopft. Hast du mal ein Problem gehabt? Na? Na, Ella? Ah, here it's open, as you can see it. So I've really, uh, I just have, uh, have slight contact. Ah, now, it was too much pressure. <laughs> and we see the vein, and next to the vein, 
here the sural nerve. This one. It's easy to find in the neighborhood of the uh, of the saphenous vein. Yeah. Okay. I think that's it. <laughs>